It's one of the biggest overhauls to our welfare system. New changes, supposed to make it easier for recipients to get a job. But some say it'll just make it simpler to rot the system. Meet Sky and Harley. They're young Australians who rely on welfare to get by. We don't get a lot of money. Both say their Centrelink payments are stretched too thin. It's not enough to really get you, get you A to B. I have pets that I've got to feed, you know, all that sort of stuff. 21-year-old Skye is unemployed and lives out of home. She pockets around $450 a fortnight in youth allowance. No, I don't think it's enough. Harley has struggled to find steady work and receives $540 a fortnight in New Start. In order to keep pocketing their payments in full, they're required to attend face-to-face -face meetings with job service providers and apply for 20 positions a month. If you miss your job appointments, they cut you off your payments, which is ridiculous. But it will soon be easier for Australians like Sky and Harley, thanks to the biggest shake-up of our welfare system in more than two decades. From July, they'll no longer have to apply for those 20 jobs a month or attend face-to-face -face appointments with job service providers. We know that one in five people who are receiving welfare payments are still in the system five years on. And that simply isn't good enough. Jobs Minister Kelly O'Dwyer tells A Current Affair the changes will streamline the much maligned Job Active system, moving it further into the digital space and helping deliver extra services to the unemployed and employers. We want to make sure uh, that it is going to be much more timely and that people aren't applying for ghost jobs, jobs that don't exist or jobs that have already been filled. So we're going to make sure that the online tools are so much better, they're better targeted to that person's uh, region, where they live, the skills they have and the opportunities that are available. The overhaul has been welcomed by welfare recipients who say the current requirements are too much. But you're expected to do more than what you should really have to do. Instead of just looking in the paper and saying, yep, I would go to that job, you can't do that anymore. But it has proven divisive. There are people out there who would take advantage of it, absolutely. And mutual obligation is still very much part of the system. It's just that it's going to be relevant to the individual and make sure that it fits their needs rather than simply being a ticker box approach that neither works for the person nor works for the employer. It could have an impact like the robo-debt system. Dr Peter Davidson from the Australian Council of Social Services warns a reliance on automation over face-to-face -face help could spell trouble for welfare recipients struggling to meet the requirements. And under the proposed system, as we understand it, um, people's payments would be suspended without any opportunity to explain to an actual person why they didn't attend an interview or why they missed an activity. Well, certainly there's no debt component um, to anything that we're trialling here. Uh, that would be the first point I make. But secondly, part of the reason you actually have a trial, and the trial commences from the 1st of July of this year, is to make sure that you have no unintended consequences. The government says it will save money by eventually shifting focus away from its contracted job service providers. The contracts with these private employment offices will cost the budget more than $6 billion over the next four years. There's certainly no shortage of job agencies at this shopping centre alone. There are one, two, three, four and two around the corner. But the local welfare recipients here in Adelaide's southern suburbs say they still can't find work, telling ACA the system is broken. You never get a rapport with anyone. You never kind of get somebody who knows you and you know them. Anthony, who's 59, has been unemployed for several years now. Uh, all these obligations you've got to do, but they seem to not have to do their part as much as what you have to. How many jobs have you applied for all up? Uh, hundreds. Well, literally, I do probably 30 to 40 a month for, yeah, for a while, so... And no luck? No. I'm either too old or uh, not experienced enough. It's sad, unnecessary, and I have no idea why they are taking taxpayers' money in maintaining their roles. Like, honestly. Jody has now locked down stable employment, but no thanks to her job service provider. They can all kiss my natural black ass, basically. 
The Adelaide woman says she could never get a straight answer from her provider and was sometimes forced to wait for close to two hours for five minute appointments. But because I'm unemployed, it's safe to say I can just sit there for an hour and 45 minutes as far as they're concerned, you know, which was horrendous at the time. A report last year was highly critical of the current system, claiming it was wasting time for the unemployed and employers. There is an average of one consultant per 148 job seekers with a staff turnover of 42%. So it's going to be much more uh, relevant to people at a particular point in time and it's going to be much more relevant to their needs and the needs of employers. The changes will be trialled in Adelaide's southern suburbs and the New South Wales mid-north coast before a national rollout in mid-2022.